So today I want to show you a really great method for quickly animating things like tails as well as the more fine sort of overlappy weighty detail that you often want to get in your animation. Especially if your character or creature is doing a settle, you want to get some really nice sort of like weight in that motion, some almost like dynamics driven weight that you want to get in your animation. Obviously animating something like that can take quite a while. So any way we can speed up that process is really helpful. So I have Maya open up here and I have this Raptor rig, which is the I animate uh, Velociraptor rig. And this animation is still pretty rough in here, but you can see it's sort of like this sort of calling motion, obviously heavily inspired by films like Jurassic Park, sort of their communication that the Raptors often do. So you can see animation is still pretty rough. Things like the ankles aren't really quite animated yet, but you can start to see this animation take shape. Now you'll also notice that the tail doesn't have any animation on it. It has this main pose that it starts with, but there is no animation on it. So obviously one thing that you can do when you're animating tails is to actually go in there, start breaking down the main key poses that you want for this tail and just begin to animate it in a way that sort of makes sense with the body. Oftentimes the way I approach animating tails is beginning to actually animate it once a lot of the body is already moving because obviously the body is gonna sort of help dictate how that tail should actually move. So in my workflow, I always try to find tools and scripts and ways that will allow me to really speed up my workflow. Obviously working in a production environment and working in video games, you wanna make sure you're working really, really quickly. You're getting stuff in engine really fast that you can begin to iterate and test. So obviously something like a tail will take quite a while to animate. So if you're wanting to test something in engine, oftentimes you might not even animate the tail if you wanna just get a good understanding of how things feel timing and spacing wise in engine. However, there is a really great tool that I love that will really give you a solid foundation in your tail animation with literally the click of a button that then you can begin to fine tune and tweak and add the detail that you want onto that animation. So to do this, I use a tool called Bro Tools and more importantly, Bro Dynamics. And these tools actually do cost a bit of money, but if this is something you're animating very often, it can literally save you hours of time in each one of your shots. Let's just go over that process and how I actually use this. And I'll make sure I'll link this in the description to where you can actually download this. Bro Tools is a really big suite of animation tools. More specifically, I mainly just focus on the Bro Dynamics aspect of it, the dynamics of this tool. So we'll go ahead and open that up. And I'll drag it over here so we can see it. And this is the Bro Dynamics Toolkit. What I actually want to focus on is the chain here, the spring magic. This is a really simple chain to use that will give you some really nice tail detail really quickly. You can see we have like spring if you want to do more like translation type of dynamics. And then you also have the chain, which is using an N hair. And this chain is also really great for things like tails, but it is a little bit more complex as far as the setup. You can see you have a ton of different attributes. You can go in here and fine tune and tweak which can be a little bit tedious at times, and especially if you just wanna get a rough tail animation very quickly, just so you can get the tail starting to move in your shot. I mostly just use the regular just chain. You can see there's just a couple different tools and attributes you have in here to tweak the chain animation. So you have things like spring, and you can see an example video right up here if you just hover your mouse, sort of like what this would do, a low value. You can see it's very flowy. You can see a high value, it doesn't even really drag at all. So maybe something for like this, I might just go halfway and just do like 0.5. You can see the amount of twist that you want along your chain and sort of the offset between each control. So if you want to, you could tweak this. I sometimes just keep it at default. Sometimes I'll mess with the value. I'll just go ahead and keep that how it is for now. And then you also have things like tension, which you can see obviously the example between low, medium, and high here. And typically these default values will give you just a really good animation right off the bat. You also have things like the flex, which obviously adds a bit of sort of like translation in the actual chain animation. So you can see the example here between low, medium, and high values of this. But I'll go ahead and just keep the settings how they are right here. And if you are working on like a cycle or some type of looping animation, you also have this create seamless loop option, which obviously is really, really helpful to make sure that the chain animation that is created is a looping animation. The first frame and the last frame are exactly the same. So that's really helpful if you are working on some type of cycle. But I'll go ahead and make sure I have this new animation layer checked. That will obviously create a new animation layer with this animation in there. So obviously you're working non-destructively, which is great. Um, but for this, what I want to do is select my hip control here. And then just shift select each one of the tail controls. And you'll want to select the hip control. That control actually won't be run in the simulation. 
So that first control you select, so we select that hip control and then we'll select that first tail control and just go all the way down the chain. So with the settings set, all we need to do is just do this play button and this will actually just run the simulation. And obviously depending on the length of your shot, this could take a few seconds, this could take a minute or two. For this it might take about a minute to actually run this simulation. And now the simulation is done running, so if we actually play this, you can immediately see that we're starting to get some really nice tail animation for this character. And obviously that took just a couple minutes to run the simulation and immediately you're getting results that work well. And this is something I find really helpful, especially if I'm wanting to get stuff in engine and test out and see how it actually works in game. I don't wanna spend a really long time animating a tail just to test it out, but oftentimes if you are working on an animation like this, having a completely stiff tail can be really distracting, especially for other people watching your animation. So just adding this quick simulation to give you some tail animation with the click of a button is a really great way just to speed up the process overall. And of course, if you're not quite happy with the simulation, you can always change, change some of the attributes, run it again and see how it looks. I feel like for this, this tail might just be a little bit too stiff. So I would maybe go back and adjust maybe the spring value for that. But once you have the simulation on there, then what you can do is go in here, you can select all of your tail controls, and then on an animation layer, if you wanna actually tweak and find specific poses that you want for your tail, you can just add a new layer here, and then say for example, in a spot of this animation, maybe you want the tail to maybe swing over to the character's side here, so maybe on frame 44, you could bring this out a bit more, and just tweak the tail pose on a layer to actually go in there and actually create the poses that you want while you're still using the base foundation of that simulation run on the tail to still give you the detail that you want. And obviously with this simulation, you might have some penetration with the ground. So you could go in here on a layer and just tweak the tail in some of these sections just to make sure it's not actually going through the ground. You can see that just took a few minutes rather than maybe an hour to animate the tail through this long shot, which is about 340 frames, that would take quite a while to animate. And especially if you're just wanting to test this out, you don't wanna waste all that time animating these fine details when you could do it really quickly like this. So this is really helpful for me to really speed up my animation process. And since we have layers, we can always just use this as a foundation and add the specific details that we want for this tail. So the last tool I wanna to take a look at here is the LM Spring tool. And what's great about this one is it's completely free. So I'll make sure I'll link the description of where you can download this. But this is another Dynamics driven tool set that allows you to get some really nice polishy details into your animation. So you can see we have the mode here, we have translation and rotation. I'm gonna go ahead and start with translation and I'll select the character's chest control here. And this is something that might've already been run on this animation, I'm not quite sure yet. So it might be a little bit too much adding this on here, but I definitely wanna show you sort of what you can get very quickly with this. So what I'm gonna do with this is just leave everything at the default value. You can see overlap is set to 0.4 and the decay is set to 1.2 and you can always play around with these values. One thing that I wanna make sure that I have on as always is bake to an animation layer. So it just adds all of this onto an animation layer. So if you want to, you can just delete it if you don't like it. So we have it set to translation. Let's just do previs and it's gonna run this. And if you want to, you can play in the viewport to see how it looks. I'm just gonna go ahead and just bake it straight onto the layer. And you can see in your animation layers, once it's done, you'll have this bake result here. And we'll just play this. And right off the bat, you'll see this is a little bit too jello-y for the movement that we actually want. It's sort of just jiggling around. It feels like he doesn't really have any bones in his body. So it doesn't quite work how we want. But as you can see, we're getting somewhere with this. We have some really nice, overlappy details on the translation. And what we need to do now is just tweak this and dial it back a bit until we get what we want. So since we have this baked to an animation layer, we can first just play around with adjusting the weight of this layer. So something like this, I would probably bring down maybe just to a value of like 0.2 or 0.3, because again, you don't want it to feel jello-y and mushy, but you still want to get some of that nice detail in there. So you can just play around with these values tweak them as needed until you get something that works well. And you can see on the settle as the raptor comes back and does this sort of like blink here, there's some really nice settle on that translation happening in the chest as it comes to a stop. And you're able to get that again with the click of a button. Now obviously it's important not to use these tools as a crutch. You should always know how to actually keyframe these type of details into your animation. But again, when you're working in a production environment, 
you want to find these tools that can speed up your workflow, allow you to get things in very quickly, and then you can start building upon the results that you get from using some of these tools and then sort of fine tuning them to be exactly how you want. So even something like this, looking at it, I would probably bring it down maybe just a little bit more, but you can just start to layer on these simulations to your animation. So even something like this, I might run the same simulation on the hip control just to get similar sort of follow through and overlap settle on the character. But something else I wanna point out too is you have the option for rotation. Now you set up this just a little bit differently. So I'll go ahead and select the chest control and I'm gonna keep the values back at their default values. But what we need to do for this is we need to set a locator here. And this is basically where it's pointing to to run the simulation. So I'll go ahead and select locator and it's gonna drop this locator here and you can see it's the LM Spring aim locator. So it's basically aiming at this. So depending on where you place this locator in your scene, this is the type of animation that you're going to get. So if I take this locator and just drag it straight up, again, this is where it's aiming at. So this should give me more rotation detail along the X axis. So the sort of just back and forth of the chest. So if I do previs and then bake it, it'll drop a new layer. Again, we wanna make sure we have the bake to animation layer and we play it. You can see we're getting a lot of rotation happening along the X axis. Now we're getting a little bit of twist there but mainly it's just happening along the X here. It's like this, it's basically just happening mainly in that direction. And then on this animation layer, obviously a layer weight of one all the way up. It's going to give us this, again, smushy results where it feels like there aren't any bones or anything. There's no skeleton under this character just because it's gotten so overlappy and mushy that we've lost some of that weight to it. So again, this is something you wanna use sparingly and go in here to your animation layers and then start bringing this way down to get something, maybe a value of like 0.1 or 0.2, just to get a little bit of that detail in there, just enough to feel sort of the weight of the character settling. And there's like that overlap motion that you're getting when it's doing these sort of yells that it's doing here. And that again, could take a little bit to actually keyframe, but this gives you that foundation that you can go in there and start building upon. So for something like this, I would start to go in here and layer on the different rotational values here for the LM spring. So I'll go ahead and do a locator and maybe I'll drag it out this direction and I'll just bake it here. Added a new layer for us. And you can see we're getting a bit more twist that direction there. I believe that's along like the Z axis that, that this is giving us, yeah, this direction. So adding that there will give us a bit more twist. And then again, this is something that you would just go to your animation layer. Obviously this is way too much. So you'd go in here and really bring this value way down I'll hide the control curves there. And again, you can start going in here and using these tools to add just that little extra polishy detail to your animation very, very quickly. And then you can just play around with these values. Now for this animation, I think I added a few of those type of LM Spring tools. You can see I have a couple different bake results in this animation layer list. So I feel like I'm compounding some of these results. So I feel like it's getting a little too mushy. So definitely use this sparingly, but it is a great way to really speed up your animation process. Again, especially if you're working in a production environment, things like tails that will take a really long time to animate. You could be saving hours just running a simulation like this to give you just rough results in there, get the tail moving, and then on an animation layer, actually pose the tail exactly how you want how you want it to feel. And you already have that simulation underneath it, which is doing a lot of the heavy lifting for you as far as making sure the tail is flowing and following the body as it should be. So that was really all I wanted to talk about in this video is just show you a few of the really helpful tools that I use to add some of those more polishy details and really speed up the animation process when you're finding ways to like cut back on the time for some of the tasks that take quite a while to do things like tails, as well as some of this more like overlappy settled detail that you can utilize some of these tools to get you into a really good place quickly that you can just begin to build upon and add more detail of your own. Hopefully you've learned a few things that you can implement into your own workflow.